Hello everyone. This is Nina Verrett Gibson with Health and Wellness here at Greater Mount Carmel Baptist Church. And today we are continuing our health series. Let us build a better family health history, mind, body, and spirit. And today we are blessed to have Dr. Ava Jack. Hello, darling. Hi, how are you? Doing wonderful, and we're so happy to have you. And our topic today, everyone, is our kidneys health. And Dr. Jack, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Well, I am a nephrologist. And Say that one more time. I am a nephrologist. Or, as I have to tell my patients sometimes, a kidney doctor. All right. And I have been practicing since 2001 in Louisiana and in Georgia. Okay. And so some, way ask, some may ask, why did I become a kidney doctor? Yes. So let's go back in time a little bit, not too long, or as my daughter likes to say, the 1900s. <laughs> So in the 1900s, uh, I left Southern Lab, graduated in 87, and went to Dillard University. And at Dillard University, my major was chemistry. Fascinated with chemistry because kids, and fascinated with chemistry as chemistry is applied math. Mm -hmm. And loved it. Fast forward, in medical school in 91. Mm -hmm. Love kidney physiology. Mm. Moved on from med school in 95 and did a residency in internal medicine and pediatrics. And from there, I was going to go into primary care and practice there, taking care of kids and their parents, mm -hmm. until I discovered nephrology. Because mm. nef the kidney is the chemist of the body. Okay, say so that one more time. Who's the, the chemist? The kidney is the chemist of the body. Chemist of the body. Okay. It's not so much what you take in, but it's what your kidneys release. Your, the foods, the drinks that you take in is metabolized by two organs, mm -hmm. the liver and the kidney. And I found kidney physiology very fascinating. And so therefore, as I said before, I'm a chemist. So I fell in love with nephrology. And so that's how I got to it. Most people think nephrology and kidney doctors are just there when patients go on to dialysis, but it's way more than dialysis. Mm. Dialysis is the bread and butter for what nephrologists get paid for, but nephrology as a specialty takes on so many different facets because your kidney is intricately involved with every other organ in your body. Oh, it sounds like the kidney is more important than we thought. Well, the cardiologist and I get, I get into it sometimes because I say the kidney is the most important argue, organ, but um, yeah, but it's still in all. We all work together, the kidney, the heart, and the uh, brain. Yes. Okay. Well, today we have a few questions for the doc. Yes. Today. So one of our questions is what do the kidneys do? What is the job of the kidneys? Well, the kidney, as I said, before, or said earlier, it helps to metabolize the things we eat and drink. Okay. And that is one of the things that it does. It's the regulator, it regulates everything. So, but it also produces hormones. Hmm. There is something that the kidney produces as a hormone, it's called epigen. And we need epigen in order to stimulate the bone marrow to keep us from being anemic. That awesome. Ooh, that is amazing. Yes. Another thing that the kidney does is help to give you the active form of vitamin D. And we all need vitamin D. Yes, we do, especially in this COVID environment that we're <laughs> in. Vitamin D so, is it. So getting your sunlight is great, but your kidney also helps convert it to the active form that is utilized in the body. So that is very, very important. So that's too important. And the vitamin D, as we know, is important for just about everything. Yes, yes. And so that is the two hormones that I can give you okay. that the kidney uh, helps to okay. produce. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, our next question that we have is, are there different stages of kidney disease? Yes, there is. Now, at one point in time, we just said you had chronic kidney disease. Mm -hmm. But then they decided to stage it. Mm -hmm. We have stage one, two, three, 
and four and then five is usually when you're at stage five, you're going on to dialysis. However, there are some nuances with that. Don't want to go too deep into that, but yes, they are the stages. The early stages of kidney disease is one and two. Okay. When you get to stage three, well, we need to start making buckling some down and making some changes. <laughs> some changes. We don't want to get to stage three. Now, one thing I have to say is that during my time as an educator in nephrology, once you get past 40, and I, and, and I have to exp some people don't like to hear this. Mm -hmm. Once you get past 40, every decade of your life mm -hmm. afterwards, you lose 10%. That's just oh, aging. Wow. Okay. So you are aging. So I wouldn't say that's kidney disease, mm -hmm. but you're aging. Mm -hmm. And there's this whole topic and whole learning uh, modules we've put together called geriatric nephrology to understand the changes that take place as you get older mm -hmm. in your kidney. Not necessarily mean you have kidney disease, okay. but it's naturally aging. Okay, mm -hmm. dealing with the evolution. So our next question is, does the kidney disease, does kidney disease dif uh, different between men and women and other ethnic groups? Yes, it does. Mm. So one of, the re one of the ways we manage and be able to stage kidney disease mm -hmm. is based on uh, something that is excreted from the kidney, which is called creatinine. Creatinine, okay. We're gonna say creatinine. Mm -hmm. Well, creatinine, it's like an inverse way to do it. As your creatinine goes up, your kidney functioning is going down. Oh, wow. And that's the molecule that we've used. So where do you get creatinine? Well, that's a byproduct of muscles. Muscle breakdowns, rejuvenate itself, and so kitten, the creatinine is a marker that we use to see how well your kidneys are doing. So, back to your question. Mm -hmm. If you're Shaquille O'Neal, mm -hmm. you're a big guy. Right. You got lots of muscles. Right. Well, your creatinine level probably will be a little bit different. And it has nothing to do with the fact that something's wrong, mm -hmm. but you have a lot of muscles. muscles. A okay. lot of muscle mass. So let's talk about our silver foxes out there mm -hmm. who's tiny mm -hmm. and don't have a lot of muscle mass and right. cute little fox, silver foxes. And their muscle mass is not as much. Mm -hmm. So that same creatinine that you may have seen in Shaquille O'Neal mm -hmm. should not be in one of our little silver foxes gotcha. because their muscle mass is much, much smaller. Much smaller. So does it differ between... Uh, ethnic groups. Yes, it does. Okay. And it all goes back to body build, body habitus. It does. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Our next question that we have, can the kidneys, uh, kidney disease be passed through from generation to generation? It can. There are certain genetic diseases that you may have. Well, one may be you have a genetic disorder that you make lots of kidney stones. Mm -hmm. And because you make so many kidney stones, it can damage your kidney. Mm -hmm. Or you can have a kidney disease where people are deaf mm -hmm. and it, it, it's, it's a genetic disorder and then they end up on uh, having end-stage kidney disease because of that, the genetics of it. Okay. Um, then they have a disease where you have multiple cysts in the kidney. Mm -hmm. Multiple, multiple cysts. And it's just hereditary. And some people don't even know they had it. I had a particular lady. She found out that she had a lot of cysts in her kidneys on her second pregnancy. Oh, wow. They were doing an ultrasound, uh, doing early on in her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And they noticed her kidneys had all these cysts. She delivered the baby to term. Mm -hmm. She delivered both babies. Wow. But she had all these cysts in her kidneys and didn't know. So that will go to our next question. So how early should we get our kidneys checked? So, you know, once a year when you get blood work, if you don't have any, if you're a healthy um, person, mm -hmm. just get a simple blood test, okay. a simple chemistries, okay. and then check your hemoglobin. Like I said, you could be anemic. So just those different things can help. And also doing a urine test, mm -hmm. because what I said, it's not so much you take in, it's what your kidney lets you get rid of. Okay. And if you drop what we call protein, right. because your kidney helps you to hold on to the protein, okay. to help, uh, you need protein mm -hmm. for muscle mass 
and every cell of the body do you need some protein. Mm -hmm. So if we start seeing protein in the urine, then we get to looking right. at different things. So now that we're in this COVID environment, um, what things do we need to do in reference to keeping our kidneys healthy and does the COVID even affect our kidneys? Well, that's a two part question. Mm -hmm. So for those we are, have been at home or social distancing, not really going out. Like at the beginning of the pandemic last year, people were inside, right. not really going outside, right. not really doing a lot of movement. And we gained weight. Mm -hmm. My folks have gained weight, mm -hmm. that COVID weight. The COVID-15. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the things, getting some exercise in. That helps because of the weight that we do gain does put pressure on the kidney. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Uh, moving because at the same time when you're gaining weight you increase your risk of having diabetes and diabetes is a big problem for the kidney mm. and so any weight gain you have increases your risk for diabetes and increases your risk for elevated blood pressure and those two things will hurt your kidney mm -hmm. now a lot of people who have had COVID been in the hospital mm -hmm. they have had kidney failure and it has nothing to do with COVID to the kidney. Okay. It's because your lungs didn't provide the oxygen mm. and the lungs were the driver behind all of that okay. poor oxygen level. And so then your blood pressure was low because the infection was rampant mm -hmm. and your body's immune system was hyped up. And so, so much effort was to give blood to the lungs, mm -hmm. the heart, the kidney got sacrificed. So it wasn't so much, the, the studies that I've read, it wasn't so much the COVID in the kidney, mm -hmm. it was COVID how it affected every other, every other organ. organ. Oh, organ. Mm -hmm. okay, right, and you. then that happened. Mm -hmm. Got you. This has been good, Ava. I really appreciate <laughs> you doing this for us, and I've, I'm learning a lot myself. Uh, now I have some crazy questions <laughs> that most people ask about the kidneys. So I'm asking for forgiveness in, of, in advance. <laughs> The first of the crazy questions is, when a person says that he or she is passing a stone, does that mean that they have drunk a rock, have been drinking a rock? No. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many ways to get a stone. Mm. The biggest way, especially in Southeast Louisiana, mm -hmm. is our diet. Okay. So the things that can cause you to have gout, okay. the high uric acid level, can also cause kidney stones. Okay. I have had this conversation with a lot of men who like deer meat, mm, deer no, sausage, venison. deer this, venison, however you guys mm -hmm. want to call it. <laughs> Wild game has lots of uric acid. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you can have gout with that, but also you can have kidney stones with wow. that. That is the biggest thing, wild game. wild game. And then think about what we eat, it's jambalaya, uh, just the diet that we love to eat. Mm. And if you are one of those persons who have a, um, genetic issues or you just can't handle that uric acid load, mm -hmm. you will have, uh, have kidney stones. Have yes. kidney stones, not the rock. We didn't drink the rock. You didn't drink the rock, Did but you the ate rock. the meat. You ate the venison, you ate the sausage, Which you ate the boudin. The was created the rocks. I understand. Mm -hmm. Our next crazy question about the kidneys. Is it true that cranberry juice can fix all kidneys? No. <laughs> okay, gotcha. gotcha. But let me did. I, I did a little research. I've had to do some research on cranberries, cranberry juice. There is a, a, a thought. The studies have not said yes to this, mm -hmm. uh, but it, they've studied cranberries. Mm -mm. And what they found is, in urinary tract infections, cranberry juice can stop the bacteria mm. from building up okay. in the ureters. The, you know, you have the kidney bean, then you have the ureters, mm -hmm. and then it goes into the bladder, mm -hmm. then you urinate. So they were saying that the cranberry juice can stop the bacteria from forming. Forming. However, it, it, it didn't prove up <laughs> right. in other studies, but 
it, that's that's the mechanism that's behind the mechanism. it, and mm -hmm. that's pure cranberry juice, uh, juice, not the cranberry grape, cranberry. Well, really and truly, it's really just cranberries. Berries, okay. Not so much the, the juice. juice. Gotcha. Because the juice have way too much sugar. Right, right. Okay, good. I next. Wait, 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 wait. Go but, ahead, but, go but ahead. if you put in cranberry and uh, Ciroc, okay, you know. That, okay, that's that's a whole other that's a whole other set of questions. Right that there, that that it doesn't counteract, okay? Because yes. some people will say, well, I'm drink it. I'm drinking my can of cranberry juice. To take so, care of my kidneys. Take care of my kidneys, but I just add a little Ciroc. So the, the cranberry juice is going to cancel out the Ciroc. No, that's not how that no, goes. No, we don't No, That's not going to work. <laughs> no. Well, our next crazy question is, when I eat certain vitamins and I go to the bathroom, my urine is a different color. Is it true that my urine must be clear at all times? Well, no. It's not going to be clear at all times. Remember we said it's not so much what you take. Is what's with, coming out. With, with your kidney that you get rid of? Well, yes. We're going to use, we have what we call water-soluble vitamins. Mm. That's okay. your B's and your C's. Okay, mm -hmm. you could take as much vitamin C as you want. Mm -hmm. You're going to see your urine turn a color mm -hmm. <laughs> because your kidney is getting rid of the excess that it doesn't need. Okay. So that's why you'll see a change in the color because the kidney's going to get rid of it. If it doesn't need that much, it's going to let it go. Okay. It sounds like the kidneys is like a big filter system. It is a filtering system. A filtering system. Okay, our next crazy question for the doc for the kidney doctor is are there any natural ways to heal the kidneys? Um natural ways. That's a great question. And in all the research and all the things that I've looked at, I don't see natural ways to heal the kidney, but I have found natural ways to slow the progression okay. of kidney disease. Gotcha. So your natural ways, if you want to do vegan or you want to change your diet, mm -hmm. you want to get more exercise in, you want to drink more water. Mm -hmm. However, here's my disclaimer, please do not drink the pH water of nine. Oh, you might need to repeat that because <laughs> that is one of the questions about uh, talking about water and the amount of water, but we'll get to that in a minute. But explain the pH water. Okay. Remember I said the kidney is the chemist. Yes. Well, the higher the pH, you can change your metabolism on how your body functions with oh, the higher wow. pH. For an example, and the reason why I don't like it is because especially if you're on blood pressure medicines mm -hmm. and have other problems going on, if you have that higher pH, then your kidneys have to get rid of the extra bicarbonate. So that, that pH alkaline water that, right. they, that they advertise, we need to be really careful. We with. need to be very careful because if you have a decrease in your kidney function, your kidneys cannot get rid of that bicarbonate. Oh, wow. So your pH in your body becomes nine, and we don't want that because you stop breathing. Because, like I said, the kidney is the chemist, yes. and we want that. The kidney wants your pH seven point four. Okay. So if you take in too much of that alkaline water mm -hmm. and you can't get rid of it, mm -hmm. the kidney has a way to drive your respiratory rate, and then you'll stop breathing <gasps> in order to keep the carbon dioxide that you get rid of wow. in your body so your pH will go down. So if you drink too much of that alkaline water or get your body chemistry mm -hmm. to that alkaline level, you can stop breathing. And this is all physiology. This is all chemistry. Wow. You have to understand that. So, yes, you can stop breathing. I had a patient um, who took way too much. She had some kidney disease, not bad. Mm -hmm. And a doctor told her to take a little bit of sodium bicarbonate mm -hmm. out of the refrigerator. Just a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, guess what? A teaspoon for you is different from a teaspoon for me. Mm -hmm. Heaping. And so mm. she took too much. She came in, she seized, she had mm. seizures because her body chemistry pH was too high. Wow. So we have to be, now, the only time you can have that elevated uh, alkaline water 
is if you have a bout of diarrhea. Because okay. when you get diarrhea, yeah, you can have acid. Yeah. You can have an acid buildup. Right. Then you can have some. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. As possible. Wow, well, I'm learning so much. But these crazy questions are not so crazy, <laughs> I see. All right, our next question is, oh, when women are over 50, why is it that we have to be so careful when we laugh or when we cough hard? <laughs> Uh, gravity. Gravity. Things change as we get older. Things start to drop. Mm -hmm. The bladder changes, especially if you had a kid before. Mm -hmm. That pelvic floor muscles are weakened. Mm -hmm. And so you have to do those Kegel exercises. And that's all from gravity. Okay. It's kind of hard to do anything about it. But the so the key is that to do those exercises to strengthen that it's muscle. Because exactly. it's a muscle. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is for our men. Uh, do men over 50 have issues with sex because of their kidney disease? Yes, they can. Mm. Because you have those toxins that build up. And there's those little small toxins that build up that can cause erectile dysfunction. Wow. This kidney thing is becoming more and more important, I see. Mm -hmm. Our next question is, does THC and CBD products affect the kidneys? Not that I've read. Okay, great. And can you actually drink too much water? Yes, you can. So you what can. is the amount of water we should probably have daily? I'd say two liters of water a day. Two liters of water You're safe. Because there's this thing called uh, polydi polydipsia, uh, idiopathic polydipsia, meaning people have this thirst for water, and they drink, 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 and they lower their sodium. And there's nothing wrong with the kidney, they just took too many in. And so it's, it can be a uh, psychiatric disorder. Mm -hmm. Another thing that people don't realize that can cause you to have the extreme thirst and want more water that can end up causing damage to you is ecstasy. Wow, okay. You raise that body temperature, and it's like they crave water. Water. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, our next question, set of questions that we have are ways to keep our kidneys healthy. So you can tell me yes or no on some of these things. Mm -hmm. The first one is keeping active and fit. Yes. That is, more, that is important for all Very, ages or some. All ages. Wow. Even the, the younger kids. Because mm -hmm. we don't want childhood obesity. Because that leads to adulthood obesity. So yes. Yes. Next one is controlling our sugar, blood sugar. Correct. Diabetes is one of the number one causes of kidney failure. The next question is, is blood pressure a way to keep our kidneys healthy? Yes, yes, got to keep your blood pressure under control. Yes. Uh, monitoring our weight and eating a healthier diet. Yes, because that helps with the diabetes. But it also does, obesity can cause your kidneys to have to work a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maintaining our diet would definitely help balance. Yeah, and that's a that's out. a double whammy: the obesity and then the diabetes. And the diabetes. Next, we we kind of discussed this a little bit earlier, but drinking plenty of water. But as you say, not too much water, not too but much. just enough. Mm -hmm. All right. Unless you're out in the heat and you're running, and that thirst center is going to drive it. Mm -hmm. So as you begin to quench the thirst, it'll go down. Go down. Got you. Mm -hmm. All right. And what about smoking? Is that still a factor or a non-factor? Um, yes. And the yes. reason why for smoking is because it raises the blood pressure. It raises so, the yes. blood pressure. All right. Bring it down. All right. Bring it down. All right. So, okay, Dr. Jack, an, another question in reference to a uh, true or false, dealing with our kidney health. This, for us to be aware of the amount of OTC pills that we take, is that true, false? True. So let's talk about your OTCs. We got the OTC pain medications, the one we have to be mindful of. There are the ones that we call Tylenol, mm -hmm. and then we have the ones that we call non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay. And that also includes aspirin. But we have found that aspirin doesn't hurt your kidney like we thought. Mm. The mechanism behind it is Deal up for debate, but I believe it has things to do with the way the aspirin um, 
uh, inhibit platelet formation okay. and plaque formation. And I think that's the saving grace. And that's why we are on ask, that's why an aspirin regimen, if you have heart disease, is very important. Um, so then we look at, so we, we take aspirin out of it because mm -hmm. it's in a class all by itself mm -hmm. and we know aspirin to be useful in heart disease. Mm -hmm. So we have your ibuprofen, mm -hmm. we have your naproxen. And those can cause problems if you take them too much. Oh, good. It can cause problems in your, your stomach, and it also can cause problems with your kidney, especially if you want a fluid peel mm, okay. for your diabetes. I'm okay. sorry, for your high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it can interact with that. Now, don't want it, like I said, renal physiology is very, very important to me. Mm -hmm. And so when you um, have these medicines like uh, your ibuprofen, Ibuprofen inhibits certain things, prostaglandins. I'm going to throw that word out there, prostaglandins. Mm -hmm. It blocks it. So, and prostaglandins is needed in the kidneys to help the blood flow goes. Okay. Go on. Okay? okay. It makes it dilate and keep good blood flowing through that kidney. Well, when we take away the prostaglandins, mm -hmm. our vessels constrict and clamp mm. down. So think about when you're having your menstrual mm -hmm. and you're having cramps. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The prostaglandins are, are hype yes. and ready to roll. Yes. So guess what? We need things to clamp down. Okay. So that's how the ibuprofen works. And then for headaches, it, it doesn't give that much blood flow to that area that can cause problems. So it, it is useful in pain management, mm -hmm. but we need to be mindful on how much we take okay. and what we're taking with it if we're okay. on other medications. So that's very important. Now, we're going to talk about, it was one called creatine. People creatine. love to take those. Yes, yes. Um, too much of it can be a problem. I know people take it when they're muscle building. It mm -hmm. can be a problem. Um, we because it can artificially raise the creatinine level, and you'll think somebody have kidney disease. Wow! So we just have to be mindful of those types of things, and there are so many other over-the-counter, uh, not only medications but supplements. You just have to be mindful on how much you take. If you take it in small amounts, then it's fine. Mm -hmm. Just don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. So basically. The kidney is a major organ that we mm -hmm. need to pay a little bit more attention to and is a very important filtration system mm -hmm. for the body for them to work together with the heart as it's pumping. Mm -hmm. So what would be your final advice um, as a nephrologist for layman people like myself to work on improving our kidney health? Number one, get your water. You don't have to go by that... Uh alkaline water mm -hmm. get your water mm -hmm. and different i i'll tell you one of my things that i do as being ocd at times i love to taste test water and it's said taste test mm -hmm. water okay i think i think different brands of water taste different okay so i will have different waters at home okay and i taste them okay. every now and then i will say i'm gonna get Fiji or right. different kind of waters. Right. And so it must taste different because my daughter, who's a teenager, mm -hmm. she ended up drinking the, the, the nicer ones mm. and leave me the not so the nice not so ones. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> so there must be a difference. Must be a difference. It must she, be. Must she be. will drink my good water. Must be. <laughs> so get your water. Mm hmm Get your, get your tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. Let's get some activity in. So let's get moving. Let's get moving. Mm -hmm. Let's push away from the sweets. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's again, let's get moving. And then monitor the amount of over-the-counter medications that you're taking. Okay. Especially the ibuprofen. Um, it's necessary if you are in pain, mm -hmm. but let's not do it, overdo it. Over because it can make you... It can in interrupt your gastrointestinal lining mm -hmm. and also can do some damage to your kidneys if you take too much. Okay. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have learned so much today in dealing with our kidneys. I would like to thank Dr. Ava Jack for coming to give us just a tad bit of information dealing with our kidneys. And now that we know we need to get our tennis shoes and get moving, we need to increase our water intake and definitely get our physicals in and get a test on our kidneys and learn our family history so our history can health history can be better. On behalf of Greater Mall Carmel Baptist Church, once again, I'm Nina Verrett Gibson, and this is Dr. Ava Jack, and we want to thank you all for listening, and have a wonderful day, and let's get moving, y'all. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.